Hi, I'm Lisa List, and I'm going to do a video today about Angora wool uh, from the very beginning to the very end of a hand knitted product. So this is an English Angora, and I call him Tiger. And uh, he's a small, they're one of the smaller Angora rabbits, but he's very sweet and very tame. And his wool, uh, when it gets to a certain length, it will just fall out. And here you can see the new wool has a darker color right here. So this is the older wool, and it will eventually just fall out, or you can cut it right next to the skin. And I'm not going to do that part today, because that's pretty self-explanatory. And here is some of his wool that has come out recently. So that's what the raw wool looks like before it's parted. Yeah, now he's trying to get to Tiny. And then this is a giant Angora rabbit, and her name is Tiny, because I thought that would be funny. And her wool is very, very thick, thicker than his, and it um, does not mat up very easy. His wool mats up, and hers doesn't. And her hair, most of the time, you have to cut it, cut it all off. And here's her wool that has been cut off recently. So it grows really, really nice and long. And then the next step is to card it. And you can either use hand cards, cards that I bought online or a drum carter. And I started out with hand cards and I was selling the wool on eBay and the people really liked the hand carded wool. Well then I got the drum carter and they didn't want that. They wanted me to card the wool by hand. And now I don't sell it anymore. I just hog it off for myself. I spin it and I make things out of it. So this is, I didn't really put enough on here, but that's the hand carter. And then we'll switch it over to the other one. And then we'll take it off like this. And this is making a little relag. Of course, you could card it several times, but you really don't have to card Angora wool. It's usually pretty nice and neat right off the rabbit. There's your little roll eye that will spin in just a minute. Okay, and this is the drum carter. I also bought it online. It's a Brothers drum carter. And I've had it about four years. It's never given me any trouble. And it's just simple. You separate your yarn. Quick. This picks up the wool and cards it on this drum. Tiger, quit. <laughs> this is not where I do all this. I have a room for it upstairs. Oh, you can't speed it up, can you? I should have already had some of this done. Okay, you, do, you put your wool through there several times, right? and I didn't, put, I didn't fill it up, but of course you would fill it up, and this is called a bat when you take it off when it's full, and you can spin the bat, or you can make it into um, roll eggs, and we will make a roll egg right quick, out of our little tiny bat. And it normally all comes off the carter better than that when you have it full. So you card it again if you want to have really nice yarn that does not have a lot of bumps and then uneven. The more you card it, the more even your wool will be, which is what I want. Okay, now we'll make a roll ad. When your carter's full, you do this step really slow so that you don't tear the fibers. And we 
these are dowels. Just any old dowel will work. And you just turn it up like that and make a nice little roll out. It usually makes, if your carter's full, it'll make three or four roll outs. But I didn't fill it up, so we'll just make one. You can see this is much faster than hand carding, so I really, it really speeds things up. And you take just one of them out at a time, and we're ready to spin. And this is a, Krams a Kromsky Fantasia spinning wheel. Um, it's not pretty to me. I don't think it's pretty. I would like to have a pretty one, but this one works and it was cheap <laughs> and it works very well. So I have been spinning the white and I spin it very thin. You'll have to come in and get some close-ups if you can. Because when I, I would like it to be thicker because the thicker your yarn is, the faster your knitting goes. But uh, somehow I can't do that. It gets all lumpy. So I have to spin mine thin. And the first thing we're going to do is you draft your rollag, pre-draft it's called. And this is important also if you don't want to have lumpy yarn. And this spinning wheel squeaks. Even though it's oiled, it should not squeak, but it does. It's the little rubber feet down there that squeak. So we're drafting and spinning. There's some hay. We don't want hay in there. And the bobbin just picks up the wool whenever I let down the yarn. I let loose. So as long as I sit here and hold it, it's not the, this won't go anywhere. I have to let go of it. And then it will, it will feed onto the bobbin. Now if your yarn, if you're doing this and your yarn just snaps and breaks, your tension is probably too tight right here. So this is where you loosen or tighten it on this, on this model. Every model is different. So. And this is just a one ply. This is not yarn yet. You have to make two, fill up two bobbins or however much yarn you want. You don't have to fill the bobbin all the way. The most you can put on the bobbin is three quarters full. And then we're gonna ply it with another bobbin and that will make, be a two ply yarn. So I will show you that step too. And oh, and also if your yarn, if your real leg comes apart, it's no problem. You just put it back together with your fingers and it's just fine. So people, people always ask me that. Well, what if it comes apart? Well, that's not a problem. So it's fairly easy. Actually, Angora wool is a little harder to handle than sheep wool. Sheep wool is a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna show you how to ply them. Uh, Kromsky made this great big flyer and a great big bobbin and I love that because you can put a lot of yarn on here. If you're making a, a project you don't have to have a whole lot of uh, loose ends to weave in. So, of course your tension is going to be a lot bigger on this. You have to loosen it up. Oops, wrong way. And it has a magnet right here. And it, you'll hear it snap on. That's my dog Motley having a drink of water. bobbin that's three-quarter full of um, the gray wool that I have from my Angora rabbits and the gray does not spin up very dark it spins up really really light silver light blue bluish gray and I needed some dark darker yarn for my fair isle knitting and so Minnesota come here so I bought a black standard poodle 
Minnesota. And yes, I put his, mixed his wool in with the Angora wool to make these, this darker gray here, and it worked beautifully. And people think that's strange, but really it's not. If you think about it, sheep wool, which I love, is very, very dirty, but Minnesota's not dirty. I keep him clean. So I guess it sounds strange, but it's really not. Now we can ply the two together. Uh, this spinning wheel has its attached lazy cake. Lazy cake is what holds your bobbins. And so I only have the two, but that works. So you bring your two one plies up, and you we spun the one plies counterclockwise. Is that right? Clockwise. We spun the uh, one plies. All of them are spun clockwise. And to spin your uh, two ply, you have to go the other direction, or else you'll have a big mess, which I have done before. And it is a huge, huge mess. So what we want to do is get a really good twist on here before we let go. I have finished some yarn and got it out and um, it was like this. But you don't want that. You want this. So you gotta check your check your work, make sure it's you know it's spinning up really good. And this is of course is way easier than the first time, the first pie that you spin. And these move back and forth to uh, even out your bobbin. So this, are, this part's pretty relaxing and, and pretty fun, just to make sure you, you got your spin on there before you let go. That's about all there is to it. I do have a, um, I don't have the products here at the house. They're actually at a gift store here where we live called Ed and Eva's in Greenfield, Iowa. I do have something I'm working on. It's the finished product, or will be. This is going to be a scarf. This is 100% Angora wool from Tiny. And uh, it's the softest, warmest tool in the world. And you can knit it or crochet it. I don't think I would weave it. It has no body. It's real floppy. It doesn't have any body at all. Sheep wool is, has a lot of body. It would be better for weaving. And so I think that's, that's it for today. And we have the website. We'll put that on later. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. God bless you.